I love the green hair that this backdrop, you know, the <laughs> green thing gives everybody. Oh, well. um, okay. We have Melissa here with us. Melissa, please introduce yourself. Tell a little bit about yourself and your family, and then tell us about the first time you heard the words congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Hi, um, I'm Melissa Tyndall. I'm from Iowa. I live here with my husband and our three children, um, Hannah, who is 14, Ryan, who is almost 12, and then Noah, who is about four and a half months old. Um, before I ever heard of CDH, um, I had a normal pregnancy with my daughter. Everything was fine. Um, a couple of years later, we found out we were pregnant with Ryan. Everything seemed to be going fine. And then I felt like a mom's intuition type thing that something wasn't right. I went into my doctor's appointment and she's like, oh, you're measuring a little bit bigger than I would like you to. They had me do an ultrasound to check his measurements and stuff. The next day the doctor called me and said, we see something in the ultrasound that doesn't look quite right. Um, we're sending you up to Sioux Falls to a perinatologist. Um, it was on a Wednesday they called me and I was up in Sioux Falls on Friday. The perinatologist explained to us that Ryan had something called CDH, which is the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. It's the first time I've ever heard something like that. And when they told us, and normally they see this in a 20 week ultrasound, we didn't find out until Ryan was 34 weeks. So it was big, scary thought um, for us, not knowing the unknown with Ryan. Um, so I was going to Sioux Falls weekly between then and when I had him, I was going to my no normal doctor every week as well, getting non-stress tests done. Um, there was just so many things that I was like, is everything gonna be okay? Is everything gonna turn out all right? Um, basically Sioux Falls had told us if I delivered back at home, he wouldn't have made the flight to Sioux Falls. Um, during the testing that they did on me those initial weeks before I had him, they did an MRI and found out that it wasn't just a hole in his diaphragm. He was missing the whole left side of his diaphragm. So that was even scarier knowing that. Um, we had a terrific NICU team. Um, I had Ryan at 38 weeks and he was eight pounds, seven ounces. So they said the size was a good thing for him. Um, this is about all of the contact I had with him when he was born and they whisked him up to the NICU. I uh, had him at like 2.30 in the afternoon and we didn't get to see him again until about seven o'clock that night. So it was very stressful. So, um, I think that the hardest part for me as a parent was being split between my two children because one was back at home and I was up there with him. Uh, all the different medications he was on. I think they had him initially on three different blood pressure medicines at one time because of how compressed his heart and lungs were. So it was, it was tough. Um, no parent wants to deal with their kid being sick and being through all that. He had his initial surgery at six days old and um, everything went really well with the surgery and, and trying to find it. There's his, right after his surgery, you can see where the incision was at and stuff, so. Uh, it was initially after that, about another week or so before we were able to actually hold him. He was kept back in um, what they call the sick bay in the NICU for uh, at least a month, I believe. And then he finally started to be able to wean off the ventilator and onto like a CPAP oxygen and then onto the regular cannula. Um, we ended up having to put a feeding tube in because he missed out on that initial 
suck swallow concept from having been on the ventilator for so long. And they said that that was our next step to be able to go home was to do the feeding too. So it's a lot of, a lot of little things, a lot of different stuff that I was not used to from experiencing a normal pregnancy before that. He is now in fifth grade and he'll be 12 in June. And you would never know anything was ever wrong. He is like any normal 12 year old boy. Um, he is my daredevil child, which scares me sometimes because you wonder is something gonna happen? Is he gonna do this or that? And his doctors up in Sioux Falls told us he's at no greater risk than any other child his age. So. Wow. Yeah. That's great. That is absolutely wonderful. Um, so he, yeah, he had to have a another surgery because when they moved everything back down, um, his little boy parts got stuck behind some stuff. So they had to do a two part surgery to move those down. And so between the time he was born and the time he was like three and a half, he had four surgeries. So but nothing since then. Nothing since then. His, they, they put a patch in since he was missing all of his diaphragm on that side. They put a patch in and attach it to like the existing muscle tissue and then like around the ribs and stuff. And so far, all that existing tissue and everything has been growing with the patch. So we haven't had to do anything with that, which has been great because they said they would like to try to wait until he's older to have to do anything with it. Wow, that's wonderful. So he plays sports or anything like that? He is not my sporty type. Uh, <laughs> he is my video gamer. He loves watching stuff on YouTube. Um, he's been very helpful lately because we have the new baby in the house. Um, they were very excited to be big siblings and um, one of my big concerns when I found out I was pregnant was, could this happen again? I know it's not common, but I have seen it happen again. So what we did was we ended up going back up to Sioux Falls to the same, same doctor I saw with Ryan was still there and he remembered us. And they were like, we're gonna make sure everything is okay, that there's nothing wrong, that you can know, get you through this again. And then lo and behold, little Noah is perfectly fine. So that was like, of relief for us but he loves being a big brother to him that is great um i i'm asking everyone the same question do you have any advice you'd like to give to a newly diagnosed family something that you didn't know that you wish someone had told you something that you were prepared for uh, like i said there were so many unknowns um, and the short amount of time that we had to prepare for Ryan, um, the four weeks between we found out and when we had him, there was so much going through my head. I basically would say, you know, take the time to look up, you know, what it is. Take the time to ask your doctors questions. Your, you know, the NICU doctors, like I said, the ones that I had were amazing and helping us answer things. They were straightforward with us the same way with our surgeon, he was straightforward with us. It's just ask those questions. Do not be afraid to ask those questions. Do not be afraid to show your emotions. You know, this is your child, you know, you're their advocate. Great. Thank you, Melissa, so much. I really appreciate you sharing your story. And um, we're gonna, we're gonna put up some uh, pictures and videos of him so that everyone can see how great he's. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I have a bunch of his pictures from the hospital are on my Facebook page. Okay. And right. I have like a little album that says Ryan and there's a bunch of his pictures from the hospital. So feel free to use some of those if you'd like. Okay. So. Uh, we'd like to put up some video or pictures of him now too, if he's okay with that. You're okay yep. with that. Yep. There's some on there too, some more current ones. They're probably in my like mobile uploads stuff so like yeah if you just look at my facebook page you'll find tons of updated pictures of the kids oh good so. thank you yeah we definitely want people to see how well he's doing yeah. 
hearing the moms or the dads tell the story is one thing, but if you've never dealt with CDH, it's mm -hmm. for them to picture exactly what we went through or anything like that. So we definitely like the pictures and the videos, especially the survivors so that they can see that there are good outcomes and, and these kids can thrive. I think the most recent pictures I have of Ryan were probably when he held his brother for the first time. Um, and then Christmas. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I'll find it here. <laughs> oh, here we go. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, that's that adorable. Was Christmas. That is very right. cute. Obviously, the bigger one and baby brother and sister. So. Aww. Well, I have some of those. Some of those pictures are on Facebook, so. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, then I'll snag them off your Facebook. What you use. I'm fine with whatever you use. So. Well, can, can you pick out a family photo of of all of you if you have one that we can use in promos? I have. The only family photo I have is of just me and my husband, the two older ones. We haven't had any done with Noah yet, but I have pictures of the three kids together, you know, so I'll send you a couple different ones. Okay. So. That sounds good. Thank you, Melissa, so much for sharing your story and taking time. And I hope it hasn't stressed you out rushing around today. I hope you didn't feel like. Oh, no. no. Okay. Oh, no. I work with preschoolers on a daily basis. So, and the one that I work with is blind. So I'm pretty, pretty good at dealing with stress right now. Okay. So thank you. We appreciate it. I know Ryan's going to give hope to new families. So. I'll see so. you. I'll see you on Facebook. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.